Well, you guys, just as many of us suspected, the market continued to sell off all throughout Friday for the most part. Uh, the Dow losing another 350 points for an overall 3,500 point loss on the week. What is up, you guys, and welcome to another video. If you guys are new here, my name is Benji, and this is my 18th week of dividend investing with the Robinhood app. I started investing in the stock market around 18 weeks ago when the market was doing pretty much incredible with my strategy being focusing on companies that do pay dividends every quarter or every month and investing into companies that I believe in long term. I have a very long term outlook on my portfolio. I'm not looking to cash this portfolio out anytime soon. I'm looking to continue to invest into different companies that pay dividends and then reinvest the dividends into more shares of these companies and hopefully over time long term have the shares appreciate in price over time if I am ever looking to sell uh, shares of these companies and cash them out. Uh, for something else that I want to buy. If we take a look at my portfolio as of Friday, we are down another $681.92. Not as bad as yesterday, so I will say that. As of the week, we are down $4,901.42, 8.68% overall for my portfolio for this week. For the month, we are down $5,192.97. And then for the last three months, we are down $4,005.76. And for the last year, we are down $3,930.71. In today's video, I want to show you guys a few shares of companies that I grabbed during the last few days, uh, during the downturn of this market. I want to show you guys exactly what I'm buying. I also want to talk about what the biggest threat is when it comes to our portfolios. This threat might not be exactly what you're thinking. So I want to give you guys my take on what I think is the biggest threat uh, when it comes to investing, especially when it comes to dividend investing. I'm very curious on what the market's gonna look like on Monday when it reopens. Do you guys think it's gonna bounce back a little bit or do you guys think it will continue to sell off? None of us really know for sure, but I will say a few things here. I do believe that certain companies that are directly impacted by the coronavirus obviously will continue to sell off and probably keep going down in price. And some of the companies that aren't as directly involved, I could see them next week, maybe early or even late next week, starting to stabilize and maybe even start going back up in price. I'm going to make a full video that will be coming out Monday of all the different companies that I've been buying throughout this week. And I have bought quite a few shares of different companies throughout this week during this downturn. So definitely stay tuned and subscribe for Monday's video. I do want to give you guys a little sneak peek. If we take a look right here, just as of the last few hours, I bought a few shares of 3M. I bought a few shares of Coca-Cola, Starbucks, Disney, and Target. If we take a look at these five companies, and if you guys have been following my portfolio, my journey for quite some time, these aren't normally companies that I necessarily invest in. I normally stick to investing into things like REITs, finance companies, and other companies that offer much higher dividend yields. Although we don't know how long or when this downturn is necessarily going to end, I'm personally looking at different companies that I might not have been able to get into earlier because dividend yields were just way too low. But when it comes to this downturn, there's a group of big cap stocks that I probably would not have invested into, uh, let's say a few weeks ago or even a month ago, as you guys can see here. I wasn't really a big buyer of Disney at $143 or $147, but at $117 or $116, I'm really a buyer all day. At the current price that Disney is at, for example, it's yielding 1.49% dividend yield uh, with a ton of growth potential at the price that it's at right here, uh, long-term speaking again. You guys, I'm not saying that this is gonna pop back up to $140 as of next week necessarily, but Disney as a company long-term over the next two, four, six, eight years, I'm willing to bet that the price will go up long-term and getting paid a 1.5% dividend yield along the way uh, isn't gonna hurt me too much. Starbucks is another example of a company that I wouldn't have previously invested into. The price isn't down all that much yet, you guys. I do think that it could continue to go down uh, over the next few days. Come Monday, I think we'll have a really good idea of what the market's gonna look like uh, moving forward, just because over the weekend, uh, the Monday open, you always seem to have a big jump, either up or down. But with the price being under $80 right now and the dividend yield currently yielding over 2%, Starbucks is another one of those companies that I'm more than happy to hold on to because the dividend yield isn't all that bad and the growth potential on the, the price per share is definitely there long term, I would say. The most awesome thing about investing into dividend stocks is exactly this. If you guys take a look at all the dividends that are being paid out to me as of recent, uh, March 31st, this one's coming in $36.58. This is from Brookfield Property REITs, a dividend from Arbor Realty Trust, $21. Whirlpool, $3.60. As you guys can see here, all these dividends, look at what color they are. They're all green. Dividends don't go into the red. These companies will continue to pay out their dividends regardless in the short term what happens to the price of their stock. 
But when it comes to long-term investing, as you guys see here, that's why I'm so interested in dividend stocks. That's why I'm so happy to be holding all these different great companies that are paying me to hold on to them uh, for the long term. It doesn't make too much of a difference what happens to the price of their shares in the short term because they are going to continue to pay their dividends. And let's say worst case scenario, let's say worst case scenario, a few of these companies in my overall portfolio, which I have over 50 different companies, well diversified in all different kinds of sectors. Let's say worst case scenario, a few of these companies stop paying their dividends, uh, let's say for the short term or they drop their dividend a little bit. Overall, throughout my entire portfolio, that's not going to make or break the portfolio because I have so many different companies that are paying dividends that I've vetted, that I've checked these companies out in detail, I've read about. I've done my best to try to analyze these companies and look at the dividend safety and overall my portfolio is set up with mostly safe companies that have been paying out their dividends for a very long time and that will hopefully continue to pay them out for a very long time to come. So when it comes to what's the biggest threat to our portfolio, we instantly think about things like the virus, the coronavirus, or maybe the upcoming presidential election. When it specifically comes to a dividend investment portfolio like mine right here, a few of the biggest risks are the following. Not holding on to your shares long term and selling them when they do go down in price. If you buy into AT&T, for example, at $38, right now it's at $35.42. If you were to have bought into shares of AT&T for $38 and you see all of a sudden, you know, in the short term, it goes down to $35.42 and you get scared or let's say you need that money because you over leverage yourself and you're investing with money that you need in the short term. Well, then you sell the shares of that stock and then yes, that's dangerous because not, you're not going with the strategy of holding on to these different companies long term and diversifying enough to where if you hold on to these companies long term, they can need to pay you dividends and then hopefully over time the prices do go up if you are looking to sell. Another big threat to our portfolio is that we have to keep in mind is the idea of timing the market rather than time in the market. An easy example of this per se is Target. Today I grabbed a few shares of Target Corporation. It was right around $100 per share, which in my opinion is a very fair amount uh, to grab a few shares of Target Corporation. If you look at the graph here over the last few days, it's been going down and down and down. And some people might say, don't buy in any shares yet, it's gonna keep going down. The way that I look at it being a long-term investor, I look at Target and say, where's the price currently? Where's the price been historically? And where would I be more than happy to buy in to receive not only a good dividend yield on the money that I have invested on Target, but also at a price where I do see that there's growth in the long-term future. Some people will tell you that they're going to wait for the lowest price possible. They're going to wait to the bottom of the market to buy all their shares. When the reality is we don't know what the bottom of the market is. We never be able to know exactly what the bottom of the market is. So you're much better off grabbing shares where the price is fair to you and where you're happy with the dividend yield and then keep doing that over time, dollar cost averaging and overall get into a very good position of each company that you want to be invested into. My overall feelings right now has been the same as it's been all week. I'm really excited that being a new investor, this is happening because I'm so excited to be able to buy a lot of these companies' shares at a lower price than I would have ever dreamed of buying them in. We all have to keep in mind the simple fact that the lower that we buy into these companies at, the dividend that's announced is gonna be the same amount of whether you buy into these companies at $103 or $109. So at the end of the day, the lower that these prices go down, we as dividend investors, people that are holding onto our stocks long-term, we should be more than excited that this drop is happening. This is a great opportunity for us. We can make a lot of money here. We can make way higher yields than we ever would've been making, say if we were investing a month ago. This is not all bad. This is a good opportunity for new investors as long as we don't over leverage ourselves and as long as we're patient and we're holding on to these companies for the long term. That's gonna do it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like this video if you guys did like this video. Please subscribe. I'm going to be posting all the new companies that I bought as of Monday. We're gonna go through every single company that I bought and why I thought it was a good time to buy them. I'm going to continue to deposit money aggressively in this account. We're gonna keep on buying. I'm gonna take you guys through the entire journey with me. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Real quick, you guys, if you guys don't already have the Robinhood app, if you guys don't already have an account with the Robinhood app, go in my description right here, click on this link right here where it says free stock. If you guys do sign up with the Robinhood app through my link, you will receive a free stock and I'll receive a free stock. So that benefits both of us. I personally think that right now is a great time to start because you can get so many different stocks for so cheap because of the recent downturn in the market. So if you guys don't already have the Robinhood app, use my link and thank you guys in advance.